Hey there, it's Derek here from Pacific Coast Auto in Japan, and this is a 2007 Honda Odyssey. This one here modified with an aftermarket turbo kit, which is all sorts of cool because this has the K24 four-cylinder engine in it from factory, which is known to be a pretty nice performance engine in the absolute version of it, which this one is. It puts out a stock 200 horsepower. You can get these with four-wheel drive or front-wheel drive. Let me just check to see which one this one is. So it's an RB1, so that'd be a front-wheel drive, which in my opinion is the better of the two between the four-wheel drive and the front-wheel drive, unless you really want to have that four-wheel drive. Otherwise, you're carrying around a lot of weight you're not going to be using too much. Now, this one was bought from auction here in Japan, and oh my god, I can't say what we paid for it, but this is probably the deal of the year. This car is excellent, and we paid such a teeny tiny amount. Uh, I would love to tell what it is, but uh, nope, that is proprietary information, I can't say. Uh, but yes, I am all sorts of thrilled for the person that bought this one. So 121,000 kilometers on it. Engine looks like it's fine. It does vibrate a little bit. And um, as a result, there is a little bit of rattling of some of the stuff in here. Perhaps like, I don't think it's this because I put my fingers on it. And that's the aftermarket cover. I guess it lets you know that you have the HKS IV Tech intercooler turbo. And then the intercooler piping is, um, you know, it's a small engine room. They have to run it where they can. So one pipe goes completely across the front there. There is a front mount intercooler. It is a teeny tiny little one in there but it is a teeny tiny turbo. Uh, we were reading up on it, it's a T25 turbo, which is a small one. And the stock 200 horsepower gets up to about 250. You can get a little bit more based on how much boost that you wanna give it. HKS says don't give it more than 0.35 bar of boost, which is about 5P, 6 PSI. And so not very much because it is a high compression engine. You don't wanna put too much boost into an already high compression engine. Now, there is a lot of tuning culture from the uh, for the K24 engine in North America. People know how to get all sorts of high power out of them if you do want to look at doing that. Also, it uses a different oil and uses different spark plugs than stock. So when you're maintaining this, keep that in mind. So we have uh, a cone style filter over there. And this intake here, which is the factory intake, snorkels some fresh air up to the cone style filter. I would get a new filter. It looks like it's not stuffed in there well enough. There's a bit of a gap there. There's also an oil catch can here. And nothing else aftermarket, unless you want to consider this tape. I don't know why people do this. I think it's one of those uh, gimmick things. Put tape on and increase fuel economy or something like that. But yeah, the coolant, um, not a very strong concentration. If you're going to be driving in the northern areas of the USA, I would get something uh, stronger in there. Uh, the oil, probably change it, but there's no signs of any contamination or troubles with that. So let's go ahead and close the hood. We'll check out the rest of the car. Okay, looks like it has a, um, a Modulo Aero kit, which is a Honda in-house um, visual package brand. And I think it looks quite nice with that grill. Kind of has the old school Honda look, like, uh, you know, 2005, 2007, that sort of look, which to me looks great. I love the TL of that generation. And, um, the FD2 Civic Type R, and it's a three row. <laughs> I'm talking all of this about the car, the, uh, you know, it's got a turbo kit and a K20. This is kind of a minivan, kind of a station wagon, three row, seven seater, and extremely popular here in Japan, so you can get one of them at a, uh, a really nice low price if it doesn't have a turbo. There aren't too many of them that have been turbocharged. It wasn't something a lot of, you know, families were doing. This was bought primarily by the families that expected to drive their kids around. Has some cool seats inside. It's a little bit bigger than a wagon, a little bit smaller than a minivan. Nice little size. It'll give you more of a uh, car-like driving performance. And with a turbo in here, it must be all sorts of fast. 250 horsepower. I don't know, something around 1,600 kilos, 1,500 kilos should be pretty nice. Okay, so here's the inspection sheet. I'll go ahead and translate this. And part of the reason why we got it for so cheap is because this was a smaller auction, KCAA Fukuoka, and then they grade these weird cars as grade zero, which doesn't really mean anything other than they couldn't really grade it under the regular grading series. So I think a lot of people thought that it was a broken car, but it's not. And it's actually incredibly good. So it's a 2007 Odyssey Absolute. 
Aux in grade zero with interior and exterior B, 121, 533 kilometers, original white color. And it, uh, they didn't circle it, but it comes with power steering, power windows, uh, aftermarket wheels, airbag, comes with a TV and Navi. And it's, uh, they call this a half leather seat inside. I think, I think it's not real leather, but it is, I know it is. Yeah, because, um, well, let me just check this, Let's see if I'm thinking straight. The wear that's on there seems like real leather to me. The vinyl doesn't do that. So yeah, half leather seat on the interior. Okay, it says it's purchased from user and aftermarket turbo kit, so various modifications, so see in person for details. Okay, it says windshield rock chip, door mirror scratched, wheels scratched, steering wheel wear, interior scratched dirty, and the seat is cracking. I just showed you the seat. The driver's seat is a little saggy. It's not really cracking though. And then aftermarket computer, aftermarket wheels, suspension, exhaust, uh, front, inner, uh, like a hole has been cut in the inner panel. And then uh, this is a section of the auction where they don't accept claims. So if there's something you don't like, you can't ask for a refund. So make sure that you see in, in person if you want details about that. And then the body, it says uh, A2 and P here on the front bumper. It says some rust on the roof, which I'll show you. And that's pretty much it there. Now rust on the roof is usually something to be a little bit worried about. It is bubbling right next to where it touches the windshield. Of course, we knew that before we bit on it. Here's the rust there. I think that needs to be repaired before you get too deep into the car. But even with that rust, it's not really much to complain about. Okay, so a little 360 tour around it. The vehicle is maybe the same size, maybe a little bit bigger than an Accord. Same width and uh, just a little bit longer, I would think. And so yeah, it is um, dynamically more like a car than it is like a wagon. And it has sleek round lines. I've always really liked the, the front end, the back end. When I first arrived in Japan, these were one of the new cars and this whole time, I just think they're, they're great. I prefer the looks of this generation. This is the first generation. Oh, and by the way, Odyssey is a different vehicle inside Japan and outside Japan. So in North America, it's a minivan. It's a completely different car than this one. So there was a first generation Odyssey and a second generation Odyssey, which was the same for North America and Japan. And then from the third generation Odyssey, it split off so that there was a Asian version and a North American version. And so I guess the, the huge North American minivan wasn't too popular of a vehicle here in Japan because of the tight streets here and the, you know, people like smaller vehicles. And so, yeah. Mind you, they did sell the Odyssey in Japan called the Le Great, but nobody bought it because too big. So defects here, a couple of chips here, another chip here, another couple of chips here. Headlights have been discolored, so either get some new ones or polish these ones up. Front bumper, they said A2, which is a medium scratch. So there's scratch here that's been touched up with touch up paint, some paint cracks and a scuff here. We also have a little scuff here and up here. It's all on the arrow part of the front bumper. The other corner over here, just a little bit of a scratch there. Nothing really to worry about. Okay, got a little bit of a scratch here on the door mirror. Otherwise the side panels are looking really nice. Now the door handles are uh, electroplated plastic and they've started to fade a little bit, so there is that. It's not that noticeable yet, but it will be over time. A little bit of uh, deterioration in the, the plastic here as well. Okay, back end, looking good. This is an aftermarket piece that uh, they put on, like a cover that goes over the otherwise chrome section. Taillights, I believe, are stock but they have blue backup bulbs in there, it looks like. And likewise, they're faded a little bit. The aftermarket exhaust doesn't sound too, too loud. I think it's pretty suitable if you're gonna, even if you're gonna be using this as a family vehicle. And when you come down here again, we're looking good. There's no scratches or dents really to point out at all on this side. It is just a good condition wagon for a great price. And I know there's gonna be people in the comments that are gonna wanna know how much this sold for. I can't tell you this one, but if you're interested in an Odyssey, we can tell you prices of those. You can send us an email 
There's a link in the description that goes to our website and our contact information there. And we'll get back to you in a day or less. Okay, the trunk here, it has a really nice stow and go system for the seats. So you can see this has the rear seats up and you have plenty of room in there. These seats don't slide forward or backward. They stay stationary, but you can flip them forward to give yourself more room. And then the whole thing can rotate into a hole here. Let me see if I can do it. Let's take that board out. I think you mm, might be a two hand kind of thing. So I'm gonna pull that handle and yeah, the whole thing rotates and goes down like that. Couldn't be easier unless you're holding a camera in which case it is a little bit annoying. But uh, chances are you won't be holding the camera and then flipping this up is as easy as going like that. So a lot of people who have a three row don't use the back row that often, but want to use it in case of an emergency. And so that's kind of ideal to have a really easy to access section like that. Oh, look at this. What is it? It says gathers on it. STF085F digital TV tuner. Oh, factory TV tuner. Mm, kind of useless outside of Japan, but still kind of cool. Okay. And a little place to put something in the back. Isn't that weird? You never really see something like that. You don't have it on the other side. Okay, close this down. Jacob over there is shooting his first Mark IV Supra. I'm sure he's excited about that. And then we've got this bad boy to shoot next. It's huge. Okay, so one thing I don't like about this, and I don't mean to be getting on anybody's car, but they don't have sliding doors in the back, which means kids are gonna knock doors into other cars if they're not being careful, which will happen with every kid in the whole world. Um, most minivans have sliding doors, so it is something to consider. If you want sliding doors, there is my minivan, the Honda Elysian, which I adore, and we can't sell it because we love it so much. So do consider that. Not enough people are buying them, and so they're dirt cheap. Okay, these seats here can slide. They're currently in the full back position. You can see a very generous amount of leg room is available to whoever is going to be sitting in the back here. You have a fold down pillow here, and that's got your cup holders in it. It's also soft if they need to use it for their heads. To get into the back seat, it's fairly easy. You could either do it with this, or you can do it with this. Both of them do the same function. Pull that forward. That slides a little bit. It maybe needs to be um, needs to be oiled or greased or something. And then fairly easy to get into the back. I know that the third seat is not always the easiest to get into, but that's generally pretty easy. It, but it does the same thing that kind of annoys me on so many cars in that, um, when you put this back up, it goes back into the full straight up and down. It doesn't remember where it was supposed to go. So then you have to go and grab this and to put that back and grab this and put that back. And that's something that kids are just not going to do. So it is kind of annoying. Uh, one other thing I didn't mention, but uh, this here, this opens and let's see if I can grab that it becomes the floor when you're not using these back seats. You put this down and then you, when you put these seats in the full down position, then you can use the back of this without having any sort of gap for things to fall into. So that's the point of these. Okay, back to struggling with the seat. You know, it's not too, too bad because almost every car does the same thing. I just wish that they had, they didn't do that. Onto the front seats. Okay, so mechanically, everything works well. We have um, the power windows, the power steering, the brakes, the throttle. Uh, there is a throttle controller on it. And some sort of mechanical issue with that Supra up there. I wonder if it ran out of gas. Anyways, uh, what was I saying? Steering wheel has buttons on it for changing the volume, which is nice. Very similar steering wheel to the one that I've got in my van quite like it. The power folding mirrors are good. Power windows are good. A little bit of sag in the seat here. 
you can see in the outside bolster has wrinkled a bit. Uh, but you don't notice that while you're sitting in it, and it's otherwise a, um, a fine seat for using. Now I think the turbo kit came with this aftermarket computer that they have, uh, they proudly display, I guess. You also have this, which is a Cusco Econ 2. I'm not sure exactly what it is. Maybe it's the, uh, is it one of those suspension controllers? It might be. Throttle controllers, so yeah, you can uh, have uh, fast blips of the throttle if you want, because it is an electronic throttle. This one here is your, I think, boost controller, slash it tells you how much boost that you're getting. Don't get too, too much boost, don't get too greedy, I would say. Radar detector there, because of course you're gonna be driving too fast in this. You can't see it now, but these light up a nice light blue, which I think is aftermarket light bulbs in it. And then the AC, I forgot to check the AC. Let's make sure Derek is doing his job. Uh, temperature. You can hear that rattle now, right? And then you up the RPM and the rattle goes away. Yep, and the AC is working nice and well, so let's just turn that off for now. No bad smells inside. Oh, and a drive recorder is on here as well. Cool. Place for glasses. Cup holders, very easy to access, perfect location for cup holders. And a little hide box so that you can hide something in there. Inputs for the TV and another cigarette lighter adapter. The original one's up here. There is, uh, it doesn't look like it's ever been smoked in. Uh, I don't think that it has, so. Yeah, plenty of headroom, I would say, and uh, good visibility. When I drive these, I feel more like I'm driving a car than I'm driving a larger van, which uh, is something a lot of people are looking forward to. You know, these days the ground clearance is uh, quite a bit higher, and uh, it takes away a lot of your sporty feeling when you're driving something. And I think it is aftermarket suspension on here. They have that Cusco control box, and that's probably for adjusting your dampening on the fly. Okay, our video went on for too long. 17 minutes is too long for these videos. My apologies, but I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching, and have a nice day.